Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and now it's time to tackle the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. This time, fornication. What is it? Is it part of the prohibition of the sixth commandment? Once again, let's start by looking at the definition of fornication given in the Catechism. Fornication is carnal union between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2353, first sentence. In other words, the traits of fornication are two in number. One, it must be a sexual union. Two, both participants must be unmarried. Now that we know what fornication is, is it against the Sixth Commandment? Is it a lustful action? Let's look at the three criteria that make a choice lustful again and see whether fornication applies. 1. Lustful decisions always involve desiring a lesser aspect of sex, such as pleasure, more than a greater aspect, such as unity with a spouse. This one fools some people because fornication does not necessarily involve the rejection of procreation, though in practice it often does. However, on the two other primary goods of sex, fornication shows its true colors. Union with your spouse, for example. Sex isn't a real union in fornication because the two people aren't united in any meaningful sense, so there's no union there to consummate. In marriage, a man and a woman make the choice to commit to each other, to spend the rest of their lives together, but most especially to enter into a unifying relationship. And without that unifying relationship, that promise to be united until death, there's just not a strong enough union there. Sex doesn't involve proper union in that case. However, it becomes worse when you start to ask yourself why the two aren't married yet. Is it just some practical concern? Is that all that's getting in the way of the perfect union of marriage? In that case, it can't be such a perfect union after all, and the two can't be ready for sex. Is it a fear of commitment? Sex is a huge commitment because it involves taking up the responsibilities of parenthood. If you haven't committed before you have sex, you're just not ready for it. Is it because the two don't really want to spend the rest of their lives together? Then why would they have sex, knowing full well that one of its primary functions is to permanently consummate a perfect union between husband and wife? The fact of the matter is this. Any argument that can be put forth in defense of the two not being ready to marry can also be used in defense of the two not being ready for sex. Therefore, fornication really only subsists on the separation of this perfect union from the sexual act that it belongs to, and therefore it fulfills criteria one. Two. Lustful decisions always involve sex or sex-based motives on at least some level. Clearly, fornication is sex, and it therefore fulfills criteria two. Three, a lustful decision can be any action, word, or thought, as long as it conforms to these criteria. Fornication is an action, and therefore fulfills criteria three. So it follows that having fulfilled these three criteria, fornication is always lustful and always against the sixth commandment. Next time, what's pornography, and does it fall under the Sixth Commandment? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.